New media and non-violent struggle. If you're running a non-violent movement, you really need to understand how much communication matters. In the past, it was about tanks and soldiers. Today, it's about knowledge and communication. That is why it's important to say a few words about new media and non-violent struggle. Now, more than ever, internet and social media have become the most important tools for non-violent struggle. In the past, communication developed on two separate tracks. One was mass reach, and the other one was interactivity. Today, for the first time in history, this dilemma, mass reach versus interactivity, is resolved by the internet. New media enables you to reach a wider audience through interaction, and this is exactly why new media is so revolutionary. But how does this new media influence the real world? Remember Burma in 2007? Led mainly by student groups and Buddhist monks, a wave of protests known as the Saffron Revolution hit one of the most repressive and isolated societies in the world. Thanks to a bunch of brave citizen journalists, pictures were recorded on hand cams and cell phones and distributed all over the world despite the high levels of censorship. Within hours, the whole world knew about the Saffron Revolution. A few years later, in Iran, a new chapter opened in multiple uses of new media in nonviolent struggle. After election fraud in 2009, predominantly youth-driven protests hit Tehran and several other Iranian cities. Due to restrictions and censorship, activists use new media as a tool to document government atrocities against peaceful protesters including the awful assassination of young activist Neda Sultani, which reached the world via a YouTube clip. Again, new media proved to be a very useful tool of non-violent struggle. But how exactly does new media contribute to social movements? There are three key things. First, new media makes things faster and cheaper compared to the good old 80s and 90s. Back in the 90s, you had to have a system to print posters, spread leaflets, make radio commercials, knock on doors. Huge amounts of material and human resources were necessary for assembling people in one place. Now you can make a Facebook group or send Twitter invitations sitting at home and it immediately spreads like wildfire. Second, new media puts a huge price tag on state-sponsored violence against peaceful protesters. 25 years ago, Hafez al-Assad's father kicked out foreign journalists, went to the city, killed 25,000 people and got away with it. Now, even the lowest tech societies in the world, like Burma or Yemen, protests are being documented with mobile phones or cameras and uploaded onto social networks. Hiding the violence is much harder now than a decade ago. Third. New media helps the knowledge transfer process become faster and more efficient. New media helps people learn from each other. These groups are not trained. They learn horizontally from one activist to another. If somebody produces a tactic which then appears on social media, it is very likely that people on the other side of the planet will see it and copy it. Those were the good sides. Here comes the bad stuff. First, your opponent also learns, and they learn how to use new media against you. He will see it as a new battlefield and he will fight there. From the point of security, this is really important. Surveillance was tough to manage even before. Today, they will break your Facebook password and start communicating with everyone through your profile. Second, people believe that if they click, they save lives, which is of course far from the truth. This phenomenon is called clicktivism. Nonviolent social change is something performed in the real world. Third, new media can cause misconceptions about the reality of nonviolent struggle. The best example would be the phenomenon called occupyism. With new media, it is very easy to invite a lot of people to come and occupy an important public space, believing that it will change the world. But when you're looking at the scope of tactics of nonviolent struggle, occupation of symbolic public spaces is not the best one to choose. Why? First of all, it comes with huge costs. People need to eat and drink, and you need somebody to clean up the mess. It is also very exhausting and frustrating, which can lead to a violent breakout, and this is exactly the thing you want to avoid. 
Before you start relying on new media too much, always ask yourself, is there any other tactic among the hundreds of different things you can do in a non-violent struggle that will work better? So, the grand question here is don't mix tools with substance. Non-violent struggle is about universal principles for success, unity, planning and non-violent discipline. New media is just a useful tool. Keep that in mind and see you next time for the last installment of our manual for non-violent struggle.